Today I'm going to show you guys a sick way to dodge and burn in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me all up on the Twitter at AKNacer. Today we got a really sick dodging and burning tutorial. This is unlike most dodging and burning tutorials in that it's actually way, way easier and cooler. This is something you guys will be able to do very easily and quickly on any of your photos. Let's get into it. And uh, we've got this awesome dog image by Slava. He won our uh, animal contest last week. Really, really like this dog. So nice with the highlights and the shadows on here. It really makes it an ideal candidate for dodging and burning. Whenever you have like a, a pretty good amount of contrast, let's just pick a nice pink there. And uh, I'm talking about like these highlights on the skin, that right there, this right there, that, things like this. Those are really good highlight areas. Uh, that will help um, look for those in things like that in the shadow areas like this whenever you are going to be dodging and burning. This is what makes a good candidate for an image that's going to be dodged and burned. So I'm going to show you guys a simple, simple way to do it. All we're going to do is duplicate the background layer. So I'm going to hit Command J on the background layer. Okay? We're going to change this layer from normal down here to soft light. So soft light layer. Then we're going to go to filter, other, and down here to high pass. So it's now a high pass layer. And what we want to do here is we don't want to choose a radius that's too small. Usually you choose a smaller radius and that's done for sharpening. So that would be like low level sharpening like this. But we're actually going to go up a bit, you know, something right about here where it starts to affect things on like a little bit of higher level. There we go, something right there, 17 pixels or whatever. You can see the, the preview before and after. Now if you don't get this right immediately, don't worry, you just do this again. It doesn't matter that much. And we're going to hit OK and I'm just going to turn that off and on. You can see it kind of does a little bit of that effect, which is nice. Now I'm going to hit Command J twice, which is going to duplicate that layer. So now we've got three X. We've got this layer duplicated and then duplicated, and it's just kind of going, now we've got a bunch of them. Great. But it doesn't really look that good. The image doesn't look that refined overall. It just looks like, like you've got a huge filter on the entire thing. So what we're going to do is group those three layers. I'm going to hit Shift click them all, and then hit Command G to group them. So now that they're grouped, I can put a layer mask on that group, and that's going to define where these layers are going to show up and where they're going to be invisible. So to put a layer mask on there, just click on your layer mask button, or you can hold Alt or Option, click on your layer mask button, and it's going to show up as a black layer mask, which makes everything in that group invisible. So a layer mask works by basically um, things that are painted black are going to be invisible, things that are painted white are going to be visible. So I'm going to paint white on my layer mask now, just where I want these effects to be visible. This is where I want this, uh, you know, this dodging and burning to be visible. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much stick to the highlights here on our uh, puppy. We're going to stick mostly to the highlight areas. We'll get a little around the, around the eye, up here on the ear, and things like this. There we go. Right there. But the trick is to get these like nice shine areas, but don't, don't necessarily make this layer visible everywhere. So I'm going to turn this layer on and off, and you'll be able to see what a big difference that makes. I'm going to hold down shift and click on the before and after. Uh, this is making the layer mask visible and not visible again. So you can kind of like see here, you know, like the, the effects that, that this actually has. All right, let's show before and after. And if I make the layer mask visible and not visible, I can see if I wanted to bring back some more of this, I could totally do that as well. So like if I wanted a little bit more definition, I could just paint in more. So if I continue to paint in, white, it just shows up all over the place. But here, it didn't look good. So I'm going to hit Command Z, and we're not going to let it be nearly that visible. So mostly, we want it to show up here on like the dark areas. And uh, that's what's really going to help out. So this is something you guys can do really quickly with any of your photos. Just duplicate the background layer, do a high pass filter, a little bit higher number than you would do for, sharp for sharpening. Set those layers to soft light blend mode, and then put them in a group, just like that. So we have a nice before and after um, with the dodge and burn because the high pass layer does everything else for you. Really quick, really simple. That's it, guys. Now you have no excuse. You can go out and dodge and burn your photos and make them look great. Just keep in mind, be subtle with it. Be as much, do as, as much subtly as you can while still getting the effect across. You don't want to cross the line of having this be like too much. And you always want to put a layer mask in and paint in just the areas where you want these things visible. If you don't do that, you're going to really, really suffer because it's just going to make the whole image super sharp and weird and uh, it's really not going to look nearly as good. So make sure you keep those tips in mind and I want to see what you got. Leave them down below in a comment. I would love to see Dodge and Burn using this same technique. Thanks so much for watching Florin guys. I hope you had a great time. 
I'll learn you later. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Oh, I'm gonna go buy on my skateboard. I'm going by on my skateboard. Hold on, that was not good. Whoa, skateboarding in Photoshop. Backwards. For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.